could have gathered around us and given us loads of money. And anyway, we gave him the money and he told me a story before he went. And now, in my young innocence in those days, I believed anything that a 70-year-old man would tell me it had to be gospel. And he told me the following story and I've, some, I've since come to kind of ruminate upon it in my mind and maybe it isn't true, but you know, at the time it seemed true. He said to me, you know, he said, my father had a, was a, an eminent psychiatrist in the Institute in Paris in the 1940s. He says um, there was a, a bit of a problem. He was a diminutive little man, this fella. He, was, he turned out he was Mexican, actually. But he, he, he spoke in a French accent like that. Like that. <laughs> anyway, he says, my father was the, a psychiatrist in the 1940s. He said there was a problem in the Institute. He said uh, there were two men who said uh, they were Napoleon Bonaparte. One man would say, je suis Napoleon Bonaparte. Et puis l'autre, il dit aussi, non, je suis Napoleon Bonaparte. My father did not know what to do with these two Napoleon Bonaparte. Skin and hair was flying, he said. So what he did was he wrote to Sigmund Freud. And uh, Sigmund Freud wrote back and said, what you must do is put the two men into one room for two weeks. My father did what he was told, said Pascal to me. And uh, the two men went into the one room for two weeks. He says, after one week, it was absolutely degolas, absolutely horrible. He said, the uh, food was ending up on the wall, the nurses were going in, and they were having their ears bitten off. It was absolutely appalling. He said, after two weeks, peace and tranquility came, just as Sigmund Freud had predicted. And they opened the door, and the first man came out, and he said, Je suis Napoleon Bonaparte! And the other man came out and said, Je suis Josephine. <laughs> <laughs>